but I got you in here, Joe. This is the uh, Stevens Engineering Associates, the C222 HF Marine Radio. The radio has, uh, I think, 90 user programmable channels, and it has all ITU. It has all the ITU marine channels pre-programmed. Radio covers uh, 1.5 to 24 megahertz for the receiver. Transmitter is a little bit less, 1.5 to 22 megahertz. So you can basically use it for all hand bands uh, up to uh, the 15 meter band. Radio uh, is uh, amplitude modulation and upper sideband modulation capable. So uh, that is a bit of a problem on 80, 40 meters and 160, but there is a lot of uh, upper sideband nets on those frequencies I've noticed for people that are running commercial radios. The radio has a uh, keypad for direct frequency entry or memory programming and uh, there is a fluorescent uh, plasma display. Nice thing is that those things go, don't go bad. So even if the radio is uh, older than let's say 10 years the display will still work nice. The LCDs always turn black after a while. Has a front firing speaker and it sounds actually very good. Microphone is an integral part of the uh, of the radio. That is a requirement for marine radios, at least for HF marine radios, so that the microphone is never gone when you need the radio. Uh, like I said, radio. I don't know if I said that, but the radio puts out uh, 150 watts. We will demonstrate you that by quickly going to the uh, dummy load here and look at the watt meter. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. A little bit more volume, you can hear the modulation. One, two, three, four, five. Radio puts out about 140 watts on this band. It's a little bit higher on the higher bands and it goes down a little bit on the lower bands. Um, it runs off 13.8 uh, uh, volts, and draws about uh, 22, 25 amps at peak. So you need a, a good power supply for this radio. It's a completely uh, solid state. It's basically CPU control. I'll show you the inside a little bit later. Alright, I'll show you how to program a channel with this radio. First we bring it into programming mode. I have to press the 8 7 times. Then I press the channel we want to program. Let's say it's 17. And then it wants to know the transmit frequency. Let's do one of the 60 meter channels. Uh, what is it? 5, uh, 4, 0, 3, 5. And then we press enter. Then it wants to know the modulation. If we just print enter, it's upper sideband. RX frequency, you can do a duplex programming, but we don't want that obviously. So if I press enter again, it's simplex. If I want to leave the, I can, you know, I can program another channel, but if I want to leave the uh, programming mode, I just press this here. So let's see if it worked. Uh, if I press 10, that is the 160 meter band that I had programmed earlier. If I press 17, that is our new channel, 5403.5, and that is stored. Not sure how many memories the radio have, I think it's 90 or something. But this is basically, uh, I mean, 90 user programmable. It has a lot more, but those are the ITU marine channels. I'll show you that later. But that's basically how you program the radio. It's very simple. The tetrode boards work. You know, I told you what was wrong with that tetrode board we got from Bob. He had turned Andrew using Anderson's power pole connectors to connect up. Great to hear you today, 
Jim, and we will be looking for you next time. Uh, AK4 Oscar Whiskey Lima, we're going to play with you, and we're down to a minute and a half. Maybe I'll take one more check, and anybody uh, looking to check in, this is a good time. Kilo one. I'll show you the output power on the several frequencies. Um, radio uh, is currently at the center of the 160 meter band. We have a uh, FT817 as a monitor receiver and we have a BIRD 43 watt meter with a 250 watt slug in it. Um, we'll see what kind of power we get. At 160 meters we get about 115 watts 
see how the modulation sounds. One, two, three, four, five, testing. One, two, three, upper sideband, single sideband in the upper sideband. One, two, three, four, five, that sounds pretty good. That was the 160 meter band. All right, let's do the same test for the 80 meter band. I have that pre programmed. It is 3800 megahertz. hundred and fifty watts hundred and fifty watts one two three four five modulation sounds good radio is exact on frequency one two three four five that works pretty well all right let's now try the uh, 60 meter band I have that in this memory we're at uh, 60 meters now about 140 watts one two three four five and we're dead on frequency one two three four five and that's basically uh, what the radio can do the receiver goes all the way up to 24 megahertz the transmitter I think to 23 megahertz so the 21 meter band is really the highest for ham use lowest frequency it can transmit on I think is 1.5 megahertz but uh, that's in the broadcast band so we will not test that so as you can see modulates well gives off good power it's uh, it's actually a nice radio it's a good design all right let's do the same test for the 40 meter band this is the 40 meter band 130 watts power one two three four five one two three four five testing that works pretty good here we are at the 30 meter band one hundred and forty watts one two three four five modulation sounds good one hundred forty watts Let's uh, go to the 20 meter band. One hundred and forty watts. One, two, three, four, five. Testing. Twenty meter band. Okay. Let's go to the 70 meter band. 18 megahertz and 100 kilohertz. About 155 watts. Testing one two three one two three. Sounds like the radio has a built-in RF speech processor. One two three four five. That sounded pretty good. All right, let's go to the. 15 meter band. Now the radio is on the dummy load, so we're not interfering with anything. One hundred and sixty watts. One, two, three, four, five. Testing. And a good modulation. That works quite well. All right, this is the uh, top side of the radio with the cover removed. Uh, this is the uh, single side bent uh, uh, modulator. Obviously, it's the filter. This is the RF section, receiver, and uh, our transmitter exciter. Here we have the um, the synthesizer. These are the VCOs. I think there's three VCOs in there. It's a triple loop synthesizer. This is the uh, TCXO. You can adjust it, but uh, it's right on frequency, so I decided not to mess with it. This is the um, uh, CPU, which is shielded to prevent noise entering the receiver. So it looks pretty clean and uh, easy accessible. Uh, Teflon Corx is used to uh, for the inter RF interconnects, so the build is uh, it's pretty professional. I'll show you the uh, power amplifier now. This is the uh, power amplifier section. It has its own uh, 
PCB as you can see. Uh, these are the uh, harmonic filters, uh, the driver, the RF driver, and this is the PA itself. As you can see, it has two parallel amplifiers. I think that was a requirement for marine radios. They all have that. They always have two power amplifiers parallel. I think the reason is redundancy. If one, if one fails, then you still got a second one that uh, hopefully can make the contact. So it's, uh, it looks like that was a fail-safe uh, uh, design. They all have that, and this one has that too. Um, so the radio does 150 watts pretty leisurely. I think each each of the amplifiers can do 100 watt if it had to, but like I said, it uh, it is uh, stock. I haven't messed with it, and it puts out about 150 watts. Some some bands a little bit more, and other bands a little bit less. Again, very clean design, FR4 PCB, everything with Teflon coax, and uh, done very well. It takes a uh, power pole connector, standard power pole connectors, to uh, power the radio to handle the high current. Looks pretty nice. My, uh, to my dipole. Um, I have used the All right, I was going to show you the uh, marine channels. And I've had pre-programmed marine channels. We'll switch to the dummy load. All right. Now, here you can see the uh, marine channels listed. Not sure what it shows up in the video. But uh, let's say we pick 1616. All I have to do is punch that in. Enter. We're now at channel 1616. And that channel is 17287 megahertz uh, transmit or receive and 16405 transmit. So by pressing this button I can actually toggle between channel indicator or actual frequency for that channel. 17287 is our uh, receive. Transmit is 16405. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If I go to the other half of that one, two, three, four, five. That's basically the other radio. So you can see the actual shift and the channel number. We can take other channels. There is not too much to hear if we turn on the antenna. There is not much to hear during the day. One, six, four, one. Enter. <laughs> That's the, basically the 16 meter band. Well, I guess we got lucky. Now, WLO, that is actually in the list, that is uh, 1641. All right. And there is many other bands. I'm not sure how many are pro pre programmed. It looks like 800 or something. Let's say we go to 453 in the uh, 4 megahertz band. Four two two. Much more noise in that band. That's basically how that works. You can call up any marine channel pre-programmed. Shift is already in there. So this would also be a great radio in your boat. Just got my antenna on the 
here. Uh, All right. Yezu FT 2000 here, uh, driving an American. That was basically uh, uh, the C222 HF Marine Radio, 150 watts. It's the real workhorse. Uh, it's accurate on frequency, gives of good power, has excellent modulation. Receiver does a, a good job. No complaints there. And uh, you could use radios like these as a, uh, like I said, a, work, a workhorse, a radio that you don't uh, have to be uh, always very careful about and to take care of every little scratch that might happen. These radios you could use as a standby radio or for field days or for mobile use or just as a second radio. It's reliable, it sounds good and it's robust. Thank you for uh, watching this video.